So what the heck is this certificate auto enrollment? Some of you might know. It's kind of an obscure topic, and it's um, a win bind client thing. Um, <clears throat> but this past year, I, I uh, we got a uh, request here at SUSE to add certificate auto enrollment, a customer request. And uh, and I'd worked on this previously at a pro on a proprietary project, so I thought, well, oh, what the heck? Let's take a stab at it. Um, so certificate auto enrollment is a function of Active Directory certificate services. It's enabled by group policy. Um, it allows users and devices to enroll for certificates, and there's um, no user interaction required. Uh, currently, we only have support for um, device enrollment in Samba. I haven't added user enrollment yet, but I'll, that's, on, that's one of, of the things on my to-do list. <clears throat> So the idea is that normally IT teams would have to manually monitor certificates for renewals on uh, on their various systems in, in the domain. And the certificate auto enrollments eliminates this manual interventions and uh, intervention and renews certificates prior to them expiring. So anyone familiar with certificate management might point out this this is exactly what Certmonger already does, and you're wondering maybe why. We have a new solution, but it's not a new solution. Uh, that's exactly the point. Samba is utilizing CertMonger to achieve uh, to achieve certificate auto enrollment using um, what's called the Sepsis plugin. Um, that's another project uh, that I've taken over, uh, 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 taken over, and I'm maintaining. It actually uh, hadn't really been actively maintained for the past couple of years, so I took that on and started working on it. Um, one important thing to note is that CertMonger here is missing one critical piece of the puzzle in auto enrollment. And that's that um, CertMonger doesn't provide the group policy piece. So it doesn't um, look to um, an Active Directory um, server and look uh, on the sysvol and try to fetch those pieces that it needs to avoid manual interaction. Um, so CertMonger can't automatically configure the servers. <clears throat> so the um, uh, the S Microsoft specification for certificate auto enrollment uh, was actually never completed. So it was a draft specification that was sent out, and a lot of uh, I mean the Windows client computers implement this um, specification. A lot of third-party tools implement this, but then Microsoft later revoked the um, the spec and. Um, and then they replaced it with a dumbed down version that just gives a really broad overview with some pictures of how it works. Um, but the draft specification gives you a really detailed um, explanation of how it works. But there are a few exceptions in the um, in the specification where it's not actually doesn't actually line up with real behavior. So for the most part, we follow the the spec. Um, but in a few um, corner hit cases, um, we can't because it's it's broken. <clears throat> um, so there are a couple of proprietary um, group policy implementations that uh, that provide certificate auto enrollment for Linux. Um, uh, certificate auto enrollment is kind of like one of their crown jewels. Um, I, I've mentioned this in the past. I used to work on a proprietary product years ago, and this was um, a big deal for them. This was one of their big selling points. Part of group policy was that they provided certificate auto enrollment. Um, it's it's sort of their excuse that they use to tell people not to use open source tools such as WinBind or SSSD, and they should rather migrate to these proprietary tools. Um, so uh, so this is a, a, a providing this is one a more you know uh, thing in the bucket to convince people not to use proprietary tools on Linux. And to help them move move back to using open source tools. Uh, so there are three main components to uh, certificate auto enrollment in Samba. Uh, there's Samba GP update, which reads from the sysvol to check if certificate auto enrollment is even enabled, and then it copies certificate server and template information from the sysvol and from LDAP. <coughs> CertMonger um, provides the daemon which monitors certificates for impending expiration and refreshes them um, when necessary. Uh, Sepsis, again, is the plugin to CertMonger. 
which implements the protocols to enable the certificate enrollment policy and certificate enrollment service. Um, this allows Cert Monitor to, Monger to communicate with the Active Directory certificate service. Throughout my presentation, I'll have these uh, QR codes. Those are just links so that you can use your phone to open up a link and, and uh, read more about it. <clears throat> so these are the steps here for all of this uh, 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 from the Samba GP update side. Um, Samba first checks the value of, uh, of an AE policy key in, the, in, in a group policy if the, um, on the SysVol. If the enroll flag is set on that um, on that key, then we proceed to check whether an advanced configuration is enabled. <clears throat> the advanced configuration is when CAs are written to the SysVol instead of being fetched from LDAP. I don't know why, but I, I heard some uh, uh, some discussion from some from some customers about how they didn't want these stored in LDAP, and I guess Microsoft added this option so that they could store it in SysVol. I don't understand all the uh, all the history there, but they didn't want uh, the data stored in LDAP if possible. Uh, and this is actually one place where the actual server behavior differs from the Microsoft spec. Um, the specification specifies that we only use advanced configuration written to the sysfall if a specific flag is set. But in practice, this flag, the flag never actually gets set. Um, uh, Windows client behavior actually just uses the advanced configuration if it's simply present there on the sysfall. Um, after we've fetched a list of endpoints or, cer or certificate um, authorities, uh, then we, uh, we enroll each endpoint using git cert from CertMonger. So, so how do we do enrollment? To enroll each CA, we first install the server's root certificate. Um, we fetch it from the, the, from the server and install it. Uh, and then next, we enroll the server using the git cert add CA command. Um, from CertMonger, and then we fetch the list of supported certificate templates and enroll each template to be monitored. <clears throat> a basic LDAP configuration for certificate auto enrollment stores the CA endpoints in in in, in uh, an LDAP. Um, they're stored here in this configuration under enrollment services. Uh, the important pieces stored here at, are, are the CN of the server. It's DN host, DNS host name, the list of supported certificate templates, and um, and its root certificate. <clears throat> in an advanced configuration, it's instead store it, it, we inv instead store the um, endpoint information directly on the sysvol. Um, each endpoint is stored under the policy servers key in the sysvol and includes the URL for containing or for contacting the CA. A policy ID which must match the object good of the root domain naming context. Um, flags which will indicate whether the endpoint is enabled for enrollment, and then auth flags which indicate how to authenticate to the server. It also has a cost uh, that is for sorting the endpoint servers. So the endpoint URL looks like this. Um, in in Samba's GP update, we're parsing the the um, the endpoint URL so that we can get the server name. Um, it also provides the auth type, which we can grab from the um, from the auth flags. Um, currently, Sepsis only supports uh, anonymous Kerberos and certificate authentication. Some in the community recently proposed adding password authentication, but I'm a little leery of accepting the uh, accepting it. And we've I've been talking with this guy about possibilities for uh, using uh, like a, a keychain to store the creds because I don't want to be uh, storing a, a username and password in a plain text file on the server. That just seems like it's asking for trouble. Um, but that's the way that this is set up: is that you can provide a username or password on the client um, through configuration in order to obtain certificates, also. But that's not implemented yet. <clears throat> Um, the advanced configuration does not supply the root certificate for the server. That wasn't in the list. I implemented an easy workaround, which is to fetch the certificate or a certificate chain through uh, through Endes, um, which is a, a um, basically is just a website that the server puts up if you enable it. 
I've gotten some uh, some complaints that this is unnecessary, um, and uh, when Windows clients are somehow fetching this in some other way, um, it might be possible to simply fetch the certificate via uh, LDAP um, if it's present. Uh, but I'm not sure sure if it's always going to be there. Um, so I'm I'm working on some workarounds for that. So uh, a lot of the features I've mentioned uh, weren't actually present in Samba 4.16 when it was released, but um, I've added them and they'll be in 4.17. Uh, for example, I recently added uh, some enhanced logging capabilities. Um, and then the certificate and anonymous enrollment authentication were added recently. Um, CA initialization and template fetching uh, now follows this, the, um, the spec. Um, the Microsoft spec more closely. Uh, I actually had a mistake because I, because there were uh, there are parts of the spec that inter, are incorrect. I was trying to follow um, the behavior of a Windows client instead, and I got some of it wrong. Um, and I fixed that in 4.17. Um, I, I I also recently added support for the advanced configuration on the Sysvol um, for adding endpoints to the Sysvol. Um, that's just uh, that's in 4.17. I removed a dependency on the SSCEP program. Uh, we now do certificate fetching uh, through Endes um, using some Python code instead of um, requiring that binary. Um, and in, in the process, I made a, a, the Endes requirement op optional, um, especially if you have a simple configuration. And then there were a bunch of uh, lots of various bug fixes that needed to be addressed um, that um, others in Samba have also, the Samba team have also helped with. <clears throat> so there are a few things that still need to be done. Um, for example, uh, sepsis plugin needs a lot of work. Um, testing needs improvements. We did a lot more testing. We need better quality tests. Um, the um, original maintainer uh, uh, created a small testing environment, which just does some really simple unit testing and doesn't include a lot of the new features. Um, but there, yeah, there, there just isn't enough testing and, and needs, uh, I really need more, um, probably some more, uh, some help with getting that done. <laughs> uh, we need a certificate authentication to be configurable from the, configurable from the command line sepsis uh, submit tool. Um, that's so that a Samba GP update can, update can select the certificate to authenticate with. Right now, you have to manually configure certificate authentication if you want to use that. Um, so, and we don't want to have to do manual in um, manual interaction. We want it, want that to be automated, um, like it would be on a Windows client. Um, we need to determine how to automatically authenticate with a certificate. Um, uh, so the um, the Microsoft spec, the draft spec, does not explain how um, how to pick a certificate um, to authenticate a certificate authentication, <laughs> and, um, and so uh, I, it, it, it's kind of implied from the ordering um, uh, the the uh, the directions on how to order the cer uh, certificate authorities. So I think I know how it works, but it's not it's not explicitly explained in the documentation. So I may have to. Um, to do a lot of um, tinkering with that. Um, uh, finally, uh, Samba G a GP update here uh, needs to be able to load a certi certificate chain without Endes support enabled. Um, and I'll, I'll be working on that at some point. I'm going to do a, a short demo. Let me see here. Share the window. You should be able to see my Windows server now. Mm. <clears throat> uh, I see there's a question on the chat. I'll go ahead and answer that. So he, uh, he asked, um, there isn't anything to replace Windows ADCS, ADCS, much like Samba provides ADDC support on Linux, is there? No, there really isn't. Um, there's no alternative, um, there's no good alternative right now. Um, there was a project, 
uh, where somebody tried to create a um, a server, but the project kind of died. Um, it hasn't been maintain maintained in like 10 years, and um, I can't even build it. Um, but it would be good if we had had that as kind of a complementary option to Samba ADDC if we could provide an ADCS. All right, so the requirements on the Windows Server side, you of course need the th certificate authority installed. Um, it also requires the certificate enrollment policy web service and, and these other two certificate enrollment web service and certificate authority Certification Authority Web Enrollment, <laughs> that's kind of a mouthful. Um, these all kind of go hand in hand. This is the NDES service, which is uh, sort of optional. Um, and the NDES service is what um, was traditionally used on Linux machines because it provides a web interface where you can, um, where the, the, the administrator can distribute a password, a single password for anyone on a Linux machine to use to request themselves a certificate, um, it's not exactly <laughs> not a, not exactly a foolproof way to do it. Um, and Endes, um, I, I'm hearing from customers that they prefer to have this disabled, the ser service turned off, and which is why I'm trying to find a workaround to keep it disabled. Um, so those are the the firm requirements, you'll see in a moment that with Endes disabled, um, Samba GP update um, throws a warning, but not an error anymore. Uh, to configure it on, uh, to configure certificate auto enrollment on a on the server, you open up a uh, group policy management console, and in um, your management editor, I'm just doing it on the default domain policy here, under public key policies, you've got this auto enrollment option and you just have to set this to enabled and um, of course check to renew and update certificates and that enables certificate auto enrollment for a client. Um, to do an advanced configuration you go into this um, tool here and um, by default it'll include the the, the standard um, configuration which is this configuration here and it dumps that um, as as just a key that uh, it refers back to the LDAP configuration but then you can add more servers here uh, to be uh, to distribute pol uh, policies to the server I'm not going to show advanced configuration here um, I'm going to share my terminal window now <clears throat> you should be able to see my terminal and you can see that I currently have no certificates being tracked. And while it does have the uh, this default sepsis um, the CA option here, um, uh, Samba's group policy will add additional uh, uh, additional CAs to this list for requesting certificates. And I'll show that to you. So if we do a EP update and first I'll do an RSOP. RSOP is a resultant set of policy. It displays a uh, policy that will be displayed or has been displayed or will be deployed and ha or has been deployed on a computer. Um, you'll see here that um, it detects that uh, group policy has uh, uh, the, well, the auto enrollment um, extension detects that there is a policy deployed and uh, this is the certificate. It's just a test server, so I don't care that you see that. And then here's the name of the test server, and then it also lists the templates that are going to be installed. Um, you can see the contents of the registry here. Oh, maybe I'll just open that. So we can see that in um, on the reg or not on the registry in the registry to pull file on the sysfall. There's this auto enrollment key set, um, AE policy, and um, it shows that it's enabled. That there's a flag set in there that says it's enabled. These other two, we don't actually use these other two settings. 
Um, this is the only one we really care about. If we did have um, advanced configuration enabled, you would see it down here, um, also under auto enrollment and then under uh, policy servers. So let's apply. I'm just going to reset that so that you can see it at the top. I'm going to call the a force on the Samba GP update command, which will force an, a reapply of policy. And you see there's a warning there about Endes being disabled right there. But it ignores it and moves on and installs just the server certificate. Now, if we look at certificates, we have one certificate that's been um, deployed by our Active Directory certificate server service and um, and it matches the uh, the machine template that was uh, 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 that it was it supported now we could have multiple templates set up we could have hundreds there's there's lots of templates that you can use um, and uh, the Microsoft provides like, uh, like preset templates that you can clone and if we look at the the CAs, you can see here that to CertMonger, we've added this certificate authority um, that provides, uh, that uses the sepsis submit um, utility, um, which is the sepsis plugin to CertMonger. And it specifies the server that we're talking to and the authentication type that we're using. And like I mentioned before, we could use certificate authentication here, but right now it, um, if we use certificate authentication, uh, it has to be manually configured in our sepsis.conf uh, file on the on the server. So that'll require manual intervention. But Kerberos authentication is fully automated, so is anon anonymous authentication. All right, I'm going to switch back to my slides. Let's see. Okay. So now I'd like to provide a general update on uh, the the work that's been done in Samba's group policy over the past year. Um, last year I talked a little bit about this, and well, it was my entire talk. I was talking about the group policy. Certificate auto, en auto enrollment was just one piece of the changes that were made, maybe the biggest piece. <laughs> so that's why most of my talk was dedicated to that. But I wanted to provide a general update also. So since 2021, Samba XP. I've added certificate auto enrollment, of course, um, but also I've added um, some Centrify compatible extensions for CronTab and Sudors. This means you can set um, Centrify policies on your Windows server, and they will apply through WinBind on through Samba GP update. Um, just those two, um, but I plan on adding more. Um, this is uh, this is just to allow people to be able to, to migrate from Centrify to uh, WinBind. I've also added Chrome and Chromium extensions, so you can. Um, a, a Chrome provides um, group policy um, templates, uh, ADMX templates that you can deploy on your server. That you let you set um, policies for that are meant for Windows, Windows uh, clients. But now, when you set those um, those policies on your domain, they will also apply on your Windows clients through a Samba GP update. So all of the um, all of the settings that are available, which is hundreds, um, you can uh, customize and apply to a Linux client now quite easily. And not only did I add Chrome, but Firefox provides the same functionality. Um, it's also done the same way. You have a uh, Firefox provide, a Mozilla provides these um, uh, ADMX extensions you can add to your Windows server. And now those policies that you would normally have apply to your um, Windows machines will also apply to your Linux boxes if you're running Samba GP update. Um, I've also added um, scripts user extensions. So um, one of the big advancements this year is that I've added user um, extension support. Um, and uh, scripts was the first one I've added. I, there's uh, quite a bit of additional work that needs to happen there for other policies. 
<clears throat> I also added a firewall machine extension for firewall D. So you can now deploy firewall D um, settings to your, to your host. Um, so last year I talked to you about um, some work that was being done to merge some features from Alt Linux's GP update because Alt Linux had started their own um, project independent of Samba. Uh, they used a lot of our source code. And when I, I got in contact with them, we talked about it and we started merging some of those things into Samba um, so, that, uh, so that eventually, hopefully they will use Samba instead of their own independent implementation. Um, <clears throat> Some of the work that's been done there is those the user policies. That was basically Alt Linux code. Was I, I merged into Samba? Um, of course, all of it is GPL three, so it's been simple enough to to uh, to copy things over from those the, those projects. Um, the I've also uh, pulled the, their enhanced logging features. A couple of people mentioned last year that they were interested in seeing that in Samba. Right now, it's only in Samba's GP update. You saw that uh, as some an example of that when I ran um, GP update um, uh, in the demo just a minute ago. It displayed some of that enhanced logging. Um, one thing that I've considered is that we could um, add that and uh, make that more of a general thing and see if we can use that in Samba tool or something. Um, the Firefox, Chrome, and Chrome policies were were more inspired by all Linux. Um, their implementation was very specific. They only supported like three or four specific settings that were uh, being deployed by um, uh, Mozilla and Google. And I decided to completely rewrite that and just support all of the policies. So while it was kind of inspired by Alt Linux, it's, it's totally a, a total rewrite. The firewall policy was also a total rewrite because I wanted to support firewall D um, and their their code was a little confusing. <laughs> the last thing that I've uh, that I pulled from uh, Alt Linux implementation of GP update is their odd job GP update command. Um, this is a useful little tool because it allows um, it allows us to automatically apply machine and user policies at, at the appropriate times on um, on uh, your a Linux client Linux client. It also makes it possible to apply uh, these Samba policies when you're joined using SSSD instead of WinBind. So either one works, and I've tested this. It doesn't matter whether you're joined from WinBind or joined from SSSD. Um, Samba GP update will will apply appropriately using Odd Job GP update. Um, and uh, let me double check. Okay, seeing if there were any more comments or questions. We'll move on. Um, one, of the la uh, one last thing that I did this past year um, and in working on uh, Samba's group policy code is that I was working in coordination with, with Keith. Um, not sure if he's, uh, he's here, but um, I had been considering a command similar to this where we could um, uh, display and load or remove uh, a group policy settings from the sysvol. And um, Akis approached me and asked about, um, about about this, and I said, "Yeah, I actually started working on this." And so we worked together. Um, I did the coding, and he tested it and told me when stuff didn't work the way he expected. And so a lot of uh, 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 a lot of credit goes to Akis for for pointing out the stupidity of some of my design. And <laughs> and um, anyway, this this command is not yet merged into master. Um, but um, it's not really waiting on anything. Um, it's completed. Um, so I, uh, so it adds uh, the load and remove command to Samba tool GPO. And uh, what it does is it, 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 it looks for registry.pull settings on the sysfall. And uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Linux GPO management or Windows. It, um, we can uh, load policies. Uh, that are written using JSON, or dump them using the show command and save them, or you can remove them using another JSON um, syntax. So the, the the point is that you can um, it gives you fine grain control over uh, management of your GPOs um, 
and it's from the command line and uses JSON syntax to, uh, to modify the, the GPOs. If you want to follow the work that I'm, I'm doing on group policy, um, I try to keep the Samba wiki up to date on the group policy page. There have been a lot of changes to that page in this past year. Uh, there's still changes that I need to make, <laughs> but I try, like I said, I try to keep it up to date as much as possible. Um, there's a lot going on there. Um, so if you see me committing stuff and you don't know what it is, chances are you can find it on the um, Samba wiki and it'll explain what, I, what it is that I'm working on. Um, and uh, feel free to reach out to me if I'm not being clear enough about anything. And that's the end of my presentation. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, I see Zoom crashed for some people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, hey, and David, Keith is here. David, I'm still here. I, uh, I have a question. Hi, Tom. Um, you mentioned the, um, uh, the certificate of enrollment protocol was pu poorly documented, and you had to do a lot of work to figure it out. Have you asked Microsoft? I mean, Doc Help, they, they're, um, they're bound by all sorts of regulatory agencies to answer those questions. Um, I have not, but I didn't say that it was poorly documented. Uh, maybe I wasn't very clear. It's actually very well documented, but then um, Microsoft chose to deprecate the document. And I'd say 99% of the document is accurate and follows the uh, follows what a Windows client and server does. Um, and there are a few uh, corner cases where it doesn't quite follow the spec. What, but do, you since the spec would, what do you mean deprecate uh, the document? I don't yeah. know. I, uh, it's the first time I've encountered this. Um, well, Microsoft released this, this specification as a draft, and they made a lot of improvements to the draft, and then they deleted it from the website, and now I have to make, uh, make a special request to get it. <laughs> um, well, so that I mean, the code for that is that they they remove the feature from Windows, and therefore they don't feel they have to document it, or they somehow found it out of scope. Could be. That's weird. But if it's you, still there. If you yeah, see Windows the, speaking this protocol, it's yeah. like hard to deny that it's a protocol, right? In yeah, other and words, you don't you don't have to do the work is all I'm saying. You could hold their feet to the fire and say, yo, you know, this is an undocumented protocol. That's not good. That's a good point. And maybe I should uh, contact. Uh, I'll, I'll do that now. You, you make a good point. I'll contact uh, uh, doc support and let them know that this document um, may have been removed because they thought it wasn't being used, but it is being used. It's still being used by Windows clients. I, I I see it in action. I know it's being used. If it's being used by a retail <laughs> client, it's a uh, it's a and a by lot. yeah by many retail clients. I, yeah. I found they're... at least three three proprietary examples where they're using this and and they even make mention of it. And I know when I worked um, on one of the proprietary projects, I knew I was using this document. I don't think it had been deleted at that point. What are but they communicating with when this happens? Um, uh, so the, the, uh, you mean the, what the, uh, what uh, protocol the client is speaking to some windows system? What is that system? Is it a standard windows server? Or is it the cloud? Is yeah, it, it you, you're talking, it's talking directly to a, a, um, uh, uh, a active directory or uh, certificate service. A windows, a windows active server. directory certificate yeah. service. Yep. Okay, well, that's... So, and now the, I should clarify, the protocol, the underlying protocol has not been deprecated, but the group policy procedure for, um, for auto-enrollment has been deprecated, but is, or the, the document, I guess, has been de deprecated, but the behavior has not been removed. Well, it's changed then, slightly. then uh, you, you have a very strong case. <laughs> oh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I used and I've to run seen that program. I've that, seen discussions online. Case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen d discussions online asking why it was removed. Maybe I'll contact you privately later and I'll show you. But the uh, but Microsoft's argument was just that, oh, we replaced it with this other document. And this other document just says, here is this picture of how it works. And then that's the end of it. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> if, if you can't implement a fully functioning client from the content of the document, it's not a document. I mean, the idea yeah, I'll is, CC. The idea is yeah. that document should cover all you need to implement a protocol just like Windows. Yeah, and the old one does. <laughs> right. And it worked just fine. Okay, well, I guess that's half a good thing. But if the old one's deprecated, it's not supported, they're not going to fix it if it has a bug, and that's... That's true. And it does okay. have a couple of minor bugs, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, feel free. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Any more questions? Ross? Otherwise, we'll be taking a break until the next um, <clears throat> next presentation. Oh, I just saw there was a actually a question in the chat. Uh, let me look yeah. just a, just also, a moment, and then we'll take a break. Be free to keep discussing until. Okay. As soon as we're done here, we can uh, just take a longer break. Uh, so we still have no way of importing a RSAT GPO backup into Samba ADDC Sysfall. Um, I'm not sure why. You, uh, uh, I think um, uh, the folks over at um, uh, Catalyst were working on some group policy backup tools that actually are more, much more in depth than what I was looking at. Oh, you're saying you have some patches for that. Well, contact me privately afterward. Um, we can talk about it. But um, but there are some GPO backup tools that basically scrape the sysvol and let you back up and restore the sysvol. And it works on Windows after, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it should work just fine in RSAT after uh, restoring from a backup. And if it doesn't work, then we should fix that. I'd call that a bug. Um, the um, Samba tool command I was referring to is not um, is not meant as a replacement for that backup command. It's more of a it's more of a administrator tool for um, for being able to if you display what's on the on the syswall, then you can uh, or display the the policies that are set there. Then you can scrape that in in a, in a, JS in a JSON form and use that to apply it later. Um, the idea is to be able to easily deploy group policies from the command line. That's the point of that command. Yeah, please file a bugzilla and attach your patches, like Bjorn has pointed out. Because uh, because if you're having trouble being able to back up your sysvol, we definitely need to fix that. <clears throat> 